Hey, today I'm going to share with you five reasons why freight brokers lose shippers and how to avoid them. All right. So that's what we're going to go over in today's Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Thank you for joining me. Uh, it's Monday at noon. I do these live trainings every Monday at noon. And I truly appreciate you being here. For my replay folks, make sure you hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from you. For the rest of you, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. I'll try to give you some shout outs before we go live with the training, before I start uh, sharing those five reasons why freight brokers lose shippers and how to avoid them. Some of these things are going to be probably common sense, but a few of these things are definitely not. These are things that you have to learn through the school of hard knocks. And so I'm going to share with you those five, but I, trust me, you've probably heard of a couple, but you definitely, uh, especially if you're a new broker, right? You definitely, it's hard to anticipate some of the things that I'm going to share with you today so you can learn in advance. So thank you all for being here. I truly appreciate it. Um, we are going to get started here in just a minute. Let me give a few shout outs. So the agenda is I'm going to do the live training. Then we're going to do a giveaway. And then we are going to do um, live Q&A at the end. You got to hold your questions to the end, okay? Uh, and then we will do live Q&A. So let's give some shout outs and we'll get the ball on the road here. Cynthia Moore, welcome from District Height, District Height Maryland. Daniel from, not sure, Ozon from Lincoln, Nebraska. Michael 46 from Orlando, Florida. Eight God Poker from Chicago, Illinois. Cat Moody from Orange County, California. Daniel from Miami, Florida. Diane Rodriguez from West Palm Beach, Florida. Watts Good 323 from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome. Connor from Armenia, as always. Jomo Mighty from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Florida. Uh, Miki Customer Customs Creations from Brandon, Florida. Gloria Reds from Laredo, Laredo Texas. Timothy McNeil from Detroit, Michigan. Matthew Krause from Seattle, Washington. Dennis Ramirez from West Palm, Florida. So for right now, Florida is killing it. We got a bunch of people from Florida. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have people from all over the place. We usually do. U.S., Canada, South America, the Middle East, <laughs> uh, Australia, U.K., um, Eastern Europe. You know, we have people from all over the place. So thank you for joining me. Truly appreciate it. I know you take time out of your busy schedule. Today, I'm going to share with you five reasons why freight brokers lose customers and how to avoid them. So if you're a startup or maybe you've been in business for a little while and you got a small customer base, you definitely want to lean in. You definitely want to pay attention and you definitely want to take notes because I got a lot to go over today. Okay. So these are my notes on the training that we're going to go over. We're going to give it about another minute and then we're going to jump into it. But the agenda today is we are going to talk, uh, do the training, then we're going to do a giveaway, probably a Freightpreneur t-shirt, okay? Someone who solves problems you don't know you have and ways you can't understand. And then we are going to um, go into live Q&A. So stick around to the end. If you have questions, whether it be about this training or anything to do with becoming or growing a successful freight brokerage or freight agency, stick around to the end. I will do live Q&A. All right, so let's grab a quick drink. Let a few more people get live. And then we are going to jump into the training. I know a lot of people are probably going to catch us on replay. That works. No problem. Let's see. Zorin from Macedonia. Welcome. Step One Golf Academy from Louisiana. Anitria from Rock Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. If I don't get a chance to give you a shout out today, I apologize. Come back next week and we'll do our best to try to see if we could do that. Because today... I want to share with you five reasons why freight brokers lose customers, why they lose shippers, and how to avoid them. All right. So today I'm going to share with you those five reasons. Here's my notes. We're going to go through these really quick. Lean in. Number one on the list, and this is one that a lot of people don't understand and don't think about, is that when you get a shipper, a customer that you're moving freight with, and you start moving those for a few loads and you've been moving them for a few months or maybe even a year or more, you have to develop multiple relationships within that shipping organization at different layers. So let me give you an example. A shipping manager is kind of a lower to mid-level manager in that organization. A load planner 
someone who is planning the loads in that organization is probably a little bit below that level in the organization from a rank perspective. The director of logistics or the vice president of supply chain is above that. So those are tiers. Those are levels. The reason why you want to develop at least three different relationships at three different levels within that organization is this. Let me explain it to you. You may have heard of, you may have run into this situation. You're doing business with a shipper and things are going great. And then all of a sudden, the shipping manager, or logistics manager that you're dealing with, that you're working with, that you're friends with, that you have a great relationship with, quits, gets fired, moves to another department, and is no longer your contact in the shipping, transportation, and logistics department. So that, that pit in your stomach that you're feeling right now, because your contact is now gone, is the exact reason why many brokers will lose shippers even if it's not because of poor service or any of the other four reasons I'm gonna share with you today. So when that shipping contact turns over, again, they can get fired, they can get transferred, they can get promoted, right? They could quit. No longer at the organization. Your relationship no longer has any power. If you are limited to just one primary contact, there's a high probability that when that person is replaced, you will lose that customer. All right. So that's number one. This is one that most people don't think about. Okay. This is a big one. You have to develop multiple relationships at multiple layers within the organization. Ideally at a director or VP level, at a manager level, and then at kind of the frontline level. So I hope that helps. That's number one on the list. Okay. Number two. You've heard me say this before, over-promising and under-delivering. Now, what does that mean? It means exactly that. It means you are overselling yourself. You are overselling your capabilities, your skills, your service, your abilities. When you oversell, right, it is a, it is a huge recipe for disaster because you are setting the wrong expectations with that customer. And when you don't deliver, it erodes your relationship and decreases trust. And trust or lack of trust or loss of trust is a major reason why a shipper will start looking for other providers. If they don't think they can trust you, then they can't afford to be doing business with you. So the secret to that, to preventing that, is to under-promise and over-deliver, right? Right. So you want to make sure that you set solid, realistic expectations. Be honest and transparent and don't oversell yourself when asked a question or offered an opportunity. That's number two, all right, on the list, which is over-promising, under-delivering. Number three, poor communications between the freight broker and the shipper can and does lead to customer turnover, all right? So you can lose a customer because of poor communications. Let me explain to you. One of the big reasons why customers will transition or leave a broker or any service provider for that reason is not being responsive. Now, what do I mean by that? They send you an email looking for a quote. You take two days to get back to them on that quote. That's not responsive, okay? Um, they ask you a question about a status update on a shipment. You take four, six, eight hours to get back to them with a status update. They leave you a voicemail and you don't respond quickly, right? So those are examples of poor communications, right? The other thing is you have to learn to listen more than you talk. One of the big problems with salespeople in particular is they have a tendency to talk more than they listen. So you have to listen to truly understand what your customer's needs are. If you don't fully understand what their needs are because of your ability to communicate, and that doesn't mean always talking, that means listening. Communications is two primary tools, listening and talking. If you're not listening more than you're talking, you're gonna miss it, you're not gonna understand your customer needs. And those are just a few examples of how Poor communications can convert and lead to lost revenue, all right? That's number three. 
Number four, not acting on customer feedback. Okay, so let's say for example, you have a shipper, a customer that you've been doing business with, and he gives he or she gives you some sort of feedback. The feedback might be very simple. It might also be very complex or important to them. But that feedback, when they take the time to provide you feedback on the service that you're providing, you better evaluate the reasons why and take action. For example, it might be as simple as the shipper saying, hey, can you make sure next time your driver signs in at the gate? That's feedback. That's a process that they need fulfilled on their end. If your drivers don't do that, it's going to create issues. So that's a perfect example. Other ways, um, you know, make sure you're, if you're in a construction zone or someplace where there's heavy equipment, make sure that your driver wears a safety helmet. That's feedback. That's important, right? They've got insurance. They've got risk issues. They want to make sure they've got policies, procedures. If your drivers are not following that because you're not acting on that customer feedback, that's going to be a problem. All right. Other things, you know, please include this document, right? With your invoices, you must have this document or this piece of documentation or this piece of paper or this uh, PO number or this detail with your invoice. Otherwise, it's going to slow down and delay invoicing and cause issues. Those are all examples of feedback. The One of the funniest ones I ever got, believe it or not, was feedback where a, a, a shipper came to me and said, hey, listen, can you make sure your drivers are using the bathroom inside the facility and not peeing in the parking lot? I mean, I know that seems funny and crazy and stupid, but had I not listened to that and made it uh, you know, an effort to ensure that drivers understood that was very important to my shipper, then we stood the chance of possibly eroding trust, realize making it seem or appear that I didn't care about the customer. I wasn't listening to them and possibly lose the customer. All right. So that's number four on the list. And number five, becoming complacent is very easy, especially when you've been doing business with a customer for an extended period of time. The problem is becoming complacent and getting too comfortable can cause you to skip steps, to cut corners, and to not follow the correct processes, steps, and things that you need to do in order to ensure a high level of service, right? So complacency causes you to skip steps. You get too comfortable, and that can, that, that uh, cutting corners and, and cutting out steps that are important to that process can lead to service failures, right? Definitely can lead to service failures. And those service failures are going to fall back on you and going to er erode those relationships. Okay. So here's what I want you to understand about complacency. And this is very common in business. You've been doing business with a company for an extended period of time. You get a great relationship with the, your contacts and you become a little bit complacent. You kind of sit back on your heels. You're not quite as sharp. Here's what you need to do every day when you come into the office. You need to remember that every one of your customers, there are hundreds of brokers out there that would love to be doing business with your shippers. There are hundreds of brokers out there that would love to steal your customers, right? And if you are not giving 100% to those customers, to those relationships, then anything less than that is going to put you at risk. So you have to realize that every day, there's always somebody out there that's trying to pick your pocket in business. That's called competition. It's healthy. It's good. It keeps you sharp. So that's why being complacent can be a huge, huge issue. Okay. So let me run through the five really quick. Failing to develop, number one, failing to develop uh, relationships with multiple layers within your customer organization. That's number one. Number two, over-promising and under-delivering. Number three, poor communications. Number four, not acting on customer feedback. And number five is getting too complacent, all right? So those are the five big reasons why freight brokers can and do lose customers and shippers 
So make sure that you like, comment, and share. But most of all, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, right? I've trained over 10,000 students. Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Been doing this for over a decade. I've personally done over $200 million as a freight broker. And unlike anybody else in the industry, we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee on Freight Burger Bootcamp. Check it out at FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. Thanks for joining me. See you next week on another Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. All right. For those of you who stick around, we're going to do a live giveaway. I'm going to give away a Freightpreneur t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have and ways you can't understand. And then we're going to go into live Q&A. All right. So tell me in the comments before we go into that, tell me in the comments, have you ever lost a shipper that you've been doing business with? Someone you've lost and what was the reason why, right? What was the number one reason why you lost that shipper? There could have been a lot of reasons, but if you've ever lost a shipper, meaning someone that you were moving loads for, whether you move one load or a hundred loads, and then you lost that shipper and they're no longer doing business with you anymore, what was the reason? Hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear your reasons. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so I'm going to grab a drink and then we're going to go into the, uh, hold your questions. Live Q and A will be after the giveaway. If you type your questions now, they're not going to get answered. Okay. Cause they're going to get lost in the stream. You gotta understand I'm streaming this on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. So on my end, I'm getting comments from everybody on all of those. So there's literally already over a hundred comments in here and I'll lose track uh, of where your question is. Okay. So hold tight on those questions. Watts good three, two, three lost a load with miscommunications with the carrier. Yep. Miscommunications can be a problem, whether it be with a customer or a carrier. Correct. I probably should have talked about that. So sometimes it's not miscommunications with the shipper. Sometimes it's poor communications with the carrier and with the driver. Really good point. Great point. Uh, Tesh has had load damage during transit three times in a row. Yeah, so that's a service issue, right? So when you have those types of service issues repeatedly, not once necessarily, maybe not even twice, but when you have a, too many service issues in a condensed period of time, that's definitely going to cause you issues, right? And for them, that was an expectation thing. They expected you to perform at this level. What was the ultimate reason for the damage? What was the what was the issue? What was the cause of the damage? Was it, you know, communications issue with the driver? Was it was it a mistake on the shipper's part, the carrier's part? What was the issue? <clears throat> I'm just curious, Tej. All right, so listen, we're gonna do the free giveaway, right? So if you want a chance to win the Freightpreneur T-shirt, number one, you have to be in the United States. I don't ship these internationally. Sorry, not sorry. Um, but yeah, if you guys uh, do want uh, to buy a Freightpreneur t-shirt, you can go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. I offer them very inexpensive. I think they're like 19 bucks or something, but I'm going to give away a free one now. But anybody who doesn't win or wants a chance to buy one, um, you can check that out at freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. I thought that was funny. But anyway... So here we go. Here, if you want a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt, here's all you got to do. Pull out your smartphone, Apple, Android, whatever it is. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull up your favorite podcast app or where you listen to music. Typically, if you're on an iPhone, it's Apple Podcast. Pull up the Apple Podcast. I want you to search for Freight Broker Bootcamp, right? I want you to rate, find it, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And then let me know in the comments, Rate, reviewed, and described on Apple. If you're doing that on Spotify or Google Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you let me know. Rate, reviewed, subscribed on Spotify, on Google, on Pandora, and on Amazon, whatever. Wherever it is you are listening to music, podcasts, search for Freightbroker Bootcamp and then come back in to the comments and let me know you rated, reviewed, and subscribed. That's going to enter you for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll take you less than 60 seconds. And just so you guys know, there are hundreds of episodes, free audio trainings. This is the best of the best audio trainings. These are coaching calls that people have never heard before. 
These are webinars. These are some of these lives. These are YouTube videos that I've done that have been very popular. This is the best of the best in audio format. You can listen to this when you're driving. If you're a truck driver or you're on the road a lot, it's a perfect time to listen to the podcast. Uh, if you're working out, if you're walking your dogs, if you're just taking a stroll, whatever the case may be, um, you can put your headset on, put your earbuds in, and boom, you're listening. Um, and yeah, we've got hundreds of great reviews and we've been ranked in the top 100 out of all entrepreneur podcasts. So we're very, very lucky, very fortunate, very blessed. Thank you so much for everybody who is subscribed and listening. So, uh, that's all you got to do to enter. Fernando did it. Awesome. Mustafa, you're in Diane, you're in. All right, cool. So we've got a few, uh, Steve J. So listen, We've got three or four people that have already rate, reviewed, and subscribed. And listen, just so you know, this is an honor system. So if you win and then I call you out later um, to prove it, you got to make sure that you got the proof that you rate, reviewed, and subscribed. So be honest, okay? I would hate to embarrass you on this, on this live because you uh, decided not to be honest. So I'm going to assume that everybody's going to be. And yeah, so we'll take another minute here. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or music. Come back in, hit me up in the comments, and I'm going to do the giveaway. And then hold your questions, but we are going to do live Q&A. Do not type your questions in yet. I will let you know. Um, what's good? 323. Three. That's not going to work. Done doesn't work. You got to say rate, review, and subscribe, and then the platform. Very specific. Um, I have to have that because I've got so many people in the feed that if you don't say that, I can't recognize that's what you're talking about. Okay. So you got to be very specific. All right. So you got 30 seconds and then we're going to jump into live Q and a hold tight. We're going to do the giveaway. Gloria, welcome. You're in on the giveaway. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to randomly scroll down and pick one person with my mouse. And the winner is Fernando Sousa, Fernando Sousa, rate, reviewed, subscribed on Apple. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You're the winner of the Freightpreneur pod, uh, Freightpreneur t-shirt. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. Thank you everybody for playing along. Fernando, listen carefully. Here's all you got to do. Either on face, go to my Facebook, my Freightbroker Bootcamp Facebook page, and then message me your full name, your address, your size. This is unisex sizing. This is a large and that you won the Freightpreneur t-shirt giveaway, all right? You got to do that either on my Freightbroker Bootcamp Facebook page, or you can message me on LinkedIn. If we're connected on LinkedIn, you can message me on LinkedIn and um, make sure you get that to me. And then we will send off your, your shirt. You'll get it within a couple of weeks. Thank you everybody for playing along. Truly appreciate it. Um, and uh, listen, I love, the, I, I love the feedback from you guys. Truly appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Um, let's jump into the live. So if you guys have questions, hit me up in the comments. I will answer as many questions as I have for the time allotted. Fact is, I know I will not get to everybody's question. And in the meantime, listen, for those of you that didn't win, if you want a Freightpreneur t-shirt, okay? Someone who solves problems you don't know, you, you can't understand in ways you don't understand. <laughs> what, what does it say? Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. I was right. Um, just go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. You can order one. Um, it's print on demand. And, you know, I set that store up for you guys because I had so many people asking me. Um, hope you guys take advantage of it. I'll try to add some few new things. There's a t-shirt in there. There's, I think, a sweatshirt. I think there might be a mug that's going to come up soon. But, yeah, I did it just as a way to give you guys access, okay? So freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. Cool. All right, so what do we got for questions? Let's set up some questions here. I'll do my best to try to answer as many as I can. We have, um, Varen, how does anyone here deal into India to Netherlands cargo? Varen, I have no idea. I can't, I can't help you with that, my friend. Uh, Michael46 says, hey, Dennis, what would be your rebuttal on a call if the customer says, we're good, we have our own trucks? Okay, so... When a shipper says they have their own trucks, chances are they're telling the truth, right? That they have their own trucks. But that does not mean that all freight 
goes on their trucks. Now it might, but the fact is there are sometimes lanes or customers, particularly if they're long distance from a distribution facility, that many times they will not want to send their own truck because if they've got to send a truck from Buffalo to Phoenix, to deliver a load for a customer, they've now got to drive that truck all the way back. And chances are, if it's their own trucks and they're a private fleet, they're driving it back empty. That's a lot of cost. So sometimes long haul loads or longer loads are loads that they will outsource. Maybe they outsource it to another carrier. Maybe they outsource it to a broker. That's something you could consider. The other thing that you might want to um, bring up to them is inbound freight. So for example, they're buying raw materials from other providers. Okay. So let's say they're um, just a classic example of like a, an auto manufacturer, right? So they're assembling an automobile, but a lot of those parts are coming inbound from other manufacturers and providers. So even though they may be shipping their, their final product out on their trucks, their inbound freight might actually be coming in on other trucks or through brokers, right? Particularly if they control that freight. So in some cases, this is a condition, but there, but my suggestion to you would be to bring those two scenarios up, examples up and say, well, let me ask you, in my experience, sometimes shippers, they have their own trucks, may not want to haul long haul loads all the way across the country. And a lot of times they'll outsource that. Do you ever run into that situation? Zip your lip. They may say no. They may say yes. Then you bring up the other scenario. You bring up the other scenario of, hey, what about your inbound freight? I understand that a lot of your product that's going out to your customers is going on your trade freight, but what about your inbound loads? What about your inbound raw materials and parts? And then listen. So those are things that you might want to dig into a little bit deeper to see if there's an opportunity. And if there's not, move on, right? Move on. That's my biggest suggestion to you. Right? When you have a condition, a condition is not an objection. When there's a condition preventing you from doing business with somebody, that's not necessarily an objection. That's a condition. So you can't force them to do business with you, right? All right, so I hope that helps. Timothy McNeil asks, when I'm comfortable with your online training, what's the next step to becoming a freight agent? Well, I have an entire training. Go on FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. Go to my blog. I think it's also it's also inside the, the actual training itself. And search for how to get hired as a freight agent with no experience. I did an entire training. I think it's a three or four step process that I walk you through. So rather than regurgitating that here, I think it'd probably be best if you got you know the full and complete training. But ultimately, it comes down to finding brokers, right? And then presenting yourself, whether that be through some sort of a job board. I will tell you that um, if you want to be an agent, we have agent jobs from people that are part of Freightburger Bootcamp that are hiring agents. You can go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash jobs. That's a great place to go. So if you're looking to hire, then you can post a free job ad there. If you're looking to get hired, then you can respond to jobs and apply for jobs there. Okay. So that's another great resource. But I would say check out that how to get hired uh, with no experience on my blog, freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash blog, or you can go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash jobs and check that out. So I hope that helps. Where are we at? Where was I? Okay, so Gary asks, uh, if I only have access to one truck and trailer for sure, then how do I sell that? Okay. Well, I'm assuming that you're a broker, not a carrier. If you're a carrier, well, then you just, that's all you have to sell. If you're a broker, you're not necessarily selling um, capacity and service to carriers that you already have established relationships with. That would be ideal. But as a new broker, what you have to do is you have to develop your niche and then you have to develop a carrier base around that niche. So perfect example, how I first started, I'll give it to you in real life. When I first started as a freight broker, our niche was van Northeast outbound freight. So if it originated in the Northeast, like New York, PA, all the way up through New England, 
and it was going west or south on a van, that was our niche. Those are the customers we wanted to do business with. So we did our research. We identified what the rates were going to primary lanes. We identified who some of the key carriers were in the primary lanes. And even though we didn't have contracts with those carriers, and we didn't even have pre-established relationships with some of those carriers, we went out and sold and got loads. And then we used that sales intelligence to make sure we rated it properly, make sure we quoted it properly, to make sure that we serviced it properly because we knew we had capacity. When somebody posted a, when we got a Boston to Chicago load, we knew this was the rate and we knew that there was going to be X number of trucks available on any given point. So we did our due diligence, but we didn't necessarily have relationships with hundreds of carriers. But here's the cool thing. Every load we did when we first started, we were bringing on new carriers. The carriers that did a great job, we developed relationships with, and we would continue to reload those carriers over time. The carriers that didn't do a great job, we didn't do business with anymore. We kind of put them on the back burner. So we focused on those carriers and that's how we added new carriers. So right now you're going to be very limited if you're just focusing on one carrier with one truck that you have a relationship with, right? So, you know, I think you need, you know, it kind of comes, it's the old question, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do you get the freight or the trucks? The way I started was I got the freight. I did some due diligence. I knew the market. I knew the rates. I knew capacity, but I didn't have a bunch of carrier relationships established. Some people like to work from the truck side, but the problem is, is that not every carry, not every truck, not every load is going to fit every truck, right? So, you know, sometimes you're going to have to open up your, your, uh, load board and do some searching through load boards and post on load boards and develop relationships through load boards. So that's my two cents, Gary. Hope that helps. All right. Mike says, can you write off your TMS and load board, even your broker bond? Yes. All of that is a legit business expense. Any software you use for your business, any office equipment that you buy for your business, including your computer, your broker bond, all of those things are legitimate business experience. Now I'm not an accountant, but you could go online and you could search for um, approved business expenses and you'll see an entire list. Okay. So yeah, that would, but yeah, the broker bond, TMS, your computer, your office desk, your office chair, those are all legitimate expenses, Mike. Cap Moody asks, when there's, when there is transit damage, is, is this when you encourage brokers to have cargo insurance? Okay. So, Okay, there, no, what you have to understand, Kat, is that there's a difference between primary cargo insurance that a carrier has and contingent cargo that a broker has. So the primary cargo coverage is what you will need in order to move a load. Legally, that carrier has to have primary cargo coverage. You are responsible for making sure they have it and if there is a claim, a legitimate claim, then that primary cargo coverage will cover that claim, right? Now, contingent cargo is not primary cargo. It doesn't act as primary cargo. And in many cases, to be honest with you, in most cases, if the primary cargo doesn't pay out, the contingent cargo doesn't pay out. Sometimes it will, but in most cases it doesn't. I'll be extremely honest with you. Contingent cargo was not really as much of a risk management tool for me as it was a marketing tool. Some shippers required, for some reason, because their lawyers demanded it, some shippers required that brokers have contingent cargo. But I can tell you, I don't think there are very many times in my career where the primary cargo rejected the claim and the contingent cargo will pay the claim. There's a huge misconception, even in the shipper world, that if a primary cargo rejects a claim, that the contingent cargo will pay it. That's not the case. There are way a lot of exclusions and a lot of details and a lot of complexity in there. But in most cases, those claims are not going to get paid, but it can be a marketing tool because some shippers require it. Now, most shippers don't require it. Now, I, I, people will debate that with me, but most shippers don't require it especially if they're small to medium-sized shippers. If they're large Fortune 1000 brands, almost all of them are going to require it, okay? 
So I hope that helps. All right, I'm scrolling. Give me a second. All right, so uh, Ali asks, side question, are you still practicing judo? <laughs> yes, although I did have hand surgery uh, a few months ago, and I'm still out right now. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to my sensei. We were texting, who's also one of my close, close friends, who I, who I wrestled with all the way through college. We went to college together. Um, and I'm planning on going back maybe Thursday of this week, uh, if not next week. So yeah, I've been practicing training judo for 30 years. I have my third degree black belt. Um, I, I was a competitor for many years. I'm way too old for that now, but, but yeah, no, thank you so much for asking. Uh, judo is one of my lifelong passions. Um, when I migrated out of wrestling in college, that was kind of what I, uh, grabbed onto. Um, and so I love working out. I love teaching and coaching judo. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Let me shut this. Okay. All right. Garrett Watts asks, what would be your advice to someone who has carrier sales experience, but no customer sales lead generating prospecting experience? Who is looking to become an agent broker? Okay, please advise. All right, so my advice to you, Garrett, if you are from the carrier sales side, um, and you know it, the carrier sales side is really the the opposite side. So when you look at a broker, there's two sides to the coin. There's the sales side and there's the operations side. The carrier sales side is more the operations side. The um, you know, the customer side is more the actual customer interfacing sales side, right? So what you learned in a lot of the skills that you learned about communicating and developing rapport and relationships on the carrier sales side will translate to the shipper sales side, to the customer sales side. My suggestion to you is if you're looking to become an agent or a broker is you need to focus in on sales training. The training that I think is most effective, I mean, there's tons of sales training out there, right? There's lots of books on sales training. Jeffrey Gittimer, there's tons of sales authors out there that will sh share with you books and articles and videos about sales training. I think the most relevant, and I may be biased, is sales training that's specific to freight brokers. That's the reason why I put together my freight broker sales accelerator program. Now, my freight broker sales accelerator program is a five week coaching program where I take that piece of my brain and I transplant it into your head, which teaches you all of my best freight broker sales strategies, tactics, tools, and my entire system from A to Z. Okay. This is where I coach you. I become your freight broker sales coach. It's a five week program. If you guys are curious, it sells out every single time. It's sold out for the last year and a half. Over 500 people have went through this training. And uh, if you guys are interested, you got the only way you can get enrolled or possibly get enrolled is to get on the wait list. It's not guaranteed you'll get enrolled because again, it does sell out usually within a few days. I'm going to be opening it up very, very soon. I can tell you it'll be within the next couple of weeks. I'll be opening up. We'll notify everybody on the wait list. You'll get all the details. You'll have an opportunity to enroll at that time. If you're not on the wait list, you will have zero chance you'll be able to get enrolled. Okay. So um, again, that is the best training that I've ever put together because not only is it freight broke, it not only is it sales training, okay, that I have been doing sales for 20, 20, over 28 years now, okay? Well, actually, 30, 30 years, right? Because I started, started selling in 1992. So yeah, it's been 30 years I've been doing sales. Um, not only... Uh, is it sales training, but it's specific to freight brokers and freight agents. It's specific to this niche. So I speak in freight broker language when teaching this training, okay? Makes a huge, huge difference. So I don't want to get into it too much detail right now, but if you guys are curious, if you need help getting shippers and you're looking for a coach, someone that can help you, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list, get on the wait list, and you'll have an opportunity in the next couple of weeks to get enrolled. All right. So I hope that helps.
Question from Steve J. Are you still having another accelerator program? I'd love to get on the wait list. Perfect. I just gave it to you. So yes, yes, we are. There's the link to the wait list. Uh, Jasmine asks, can I get hired as a freight agent because I have no experience? What can I do? Yes, you can. I had no experience and I started a freight brokerage that went on to do over $200 million personally as a freight broker or $80 million a year when I sold it. So yeah, if you don't have experience, it doesn't require you. Not all brokerages require ex uh, experience or a customer base to become an agent. Many of them do. Many of them do not. If you check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash jobs, I would say, historically speaking, probably about 70% of the job posts, 60 to 70% of the job posts that have come through that job board that I put together do not require a book of business or experience. Some of them do. My suggestion, if you don't have experience, do not go to the large companies. Do not go to the companies that are really well known for their agent programs, right? Go to small to medium sized brokers and present yourself as an opportunity, as a riskless opportunity to them. Develop that relationship, build that trust, and you'll be shocked. Um, you know, how you can become a, an independent contractor agent, which is your own, you're your own business owner. You're not a W-2 employee. You work on your own, right? You're just using their brokerage as kind of a clearinghouse um, for managing your customer freight. And trust me, the agent job has less risk, less cost startup, less, less issues, less difficulty. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how many agents I've met in my career or worked for me that made six figures working from home. I've had agents and this is not the norm and I'm not projecting this out there saying that this is somewhere to get rich quick, but I've had agents out there that I've paid over $100,000 in one month. My company paid over $100,000 in one month of commission as an agent. They weren't even a broker. They were just an agent. So I've got lots of agents that I know and have met and have done business with that are making multiple six figures and some even make seven figures as an agent without owning their own brokerage without any of the risk associated with owning a brokerage, okay? So hope that helps. All right. Okay, so uh, Connor asked, I faced to, I've faced to a big crane company and they told me that they don't use brokers to move their loads. What would you suggest I do? Well, you're part of Freight Broker Bootcamp, and I think you're part of Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. If you're not, you should be. But I definitely cover that objection. I used to love when shippers told me that they didn't do business with brokers. I loved it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I knew that if I could get their attention and I could break through that crusty exterior, okay, that there was going to be less competition on the back end and that my place in there would be more secure because you have a gatekeeper who's preventing, leave, who's not allowing new brokers in. Okay. So what I would typically do when they would say, well, we don't do business with brokers. I'd say, well, that's good news. And all of a sudden they would be like, what do you mean? And I'd say, well, you know, I've heard that before. I'm sure you're not surprised that I've heard that before. Matter of fact, I've got many customers that I'm doing business with today that said that exact same thing. But once I explained to them why we were a little bit different than the typical calls that you get, um, they started doing business with us. And that gets them very curious. Well, why are these other customers that you don't use brokers using this broker? And then I said, would you like, to, would you like me to explain to you how we're different? And then they would say, sure. And then that would be their invitation to open the door. Now, at that point, I got to dance, okay? There's no guarantee that I'm going to get their business. But what I did was I turned them from a hard no into a soft no with a possible yes. So I turned them from a definite no to a maybe. Because if they're willing to listen to me at that point, there's an opportunity. Now, if they said to me, it doesn't matter what you do. We won't do business with you. I'd say, listen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Click. And I wouldn't waste my time. But it is worth digging your heels in. A lot of times when shippers are saying it, they're not saying they don't do business with brokers, even though that's what you're hearing. And sometimes even what they're saying, 
What they're saying is we're not going to do business with new brokers. We've already got two or three or four in-house brokers that we're working with, but we're not interested in new brokers. And the reason why they're saying that to you is because they know that 9.9 out of 10, AKA 99 out of a hundred brokers that they say that to will just hang up the phone. So they know that they can save time by saying that. But that one broker, I'm the one broker who didn't just collapse and, and wither away. I stood up to them and say, and I got their attention. I was different. I said, well, that's great news. I loved it. I'm glad to hear it. And then they're kind of like, well, what do you mean? Well, and then I, I, I've already explained that to you. So that's an example of how you might be able to overcome that objection. Okay. So I hope that helps. Uh, uh, yeah. Freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash jobs. That's one place you can go. You could also go on LinkedIn. You could also go on maybe indeed.com. Um, you could also search locally based on where you are. So yeah, so those are a few ways. Google. Okay. Question from Connor. Is there any sense to create a mail merge and send a salesy email to a hundred prospects that I gathered from LinkedIn and we are connected? I don't believe that's the way to do it. No. I do not believe a one size fits all email that looks the same, says the same thing to a hundred different prospects is going to be the most effective way to, um, to get your, those prospects attention. I think that you're better off taking a multi touch point outreach approach. Like I teach in my Freightburger sales accelerator where not only are you using the phone, but you're using LinkedIn and you're using email and maybe even direct mail or face-to-face, -face, okay? You're using multi-channels to do outreach, to break through the noise and find the channel where they will respond. And so email, generic email, one size fits all email, very rarely works, okay? Especially when you're send, only sending it out to a hundred people. Now, if you send it out to a million people, you, know, you might get a few responses, but a hundred probably not a whole lot. They'd have to be a really compelling email, okay? What my suggestion is, gather sales intelligence from their website, from LinkedIn, from Google, and customize an email to each one of those people that is on your list will literally double or triple your opportunity to get a response if you leverage that sales intelligence and you do things that like I teach in my Freightbroker Sales Accelerator about creating a compelling sales hook right? How to get your buyer's attention, right? So that's all, that's a big part of what I teach in the Freightburger Sales Accelerator because the hardest part about sales is not closing the deal. It's not follow-up. It's not rating. It's getting a buyer's attention. The first five to 10 seconds on the phone call, that's the hardest part. And whether that be a phone call or a LinkedIn message or an email message, it doesn't matter you still have to get their attention, okay? And so, you know, in the Freightburger Sales Accelerator, we spend a lot of time talking about um, building a compelling sales hook. You can create a compelling sales hook out of almost anything, okay? I use the classic example because it just makes a lot of sense to people um, all the time, and here it is. You've got prospect XYZ. You do a quick search on Google. You do a quick search on their website. You do a quick search on LinkedIn. You realize that they just acquired another company in their space and they just went from 50 million in sales to 100 million in sales. They just doubled in sales because they acquired a competitor. Why is that great news? How can I leverage that news? Well, the fact is me just knowing that information is going to differentiate me from 90% of the brokers out there because most brokers won't take the time to gather sales intelligence. So I can lead with that and say, uh, you know, hey, Joe, I just read the article that you guys acquired XYZ Company. Congratulations. I wanted to reach out and introduce myself. We work closely with companies that are high growth especially when they're going through mergers and acquisitions, because we understand many of the challenges associated with 
merging two companies, especially in logistics. Curious how you're handling this issue. Something as simple as that. That's one example of how to use relevant contextual sales intelligence to differentiate yourself from the crowd, to be compelling, to be relevant, and to start a dialogue. Notice what I didn't say was, hey, we'll give you cheap rates. Hey, we're the best freight broker out there. Hey, 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 hey. What I was trying to do was get their attention and start a dialogue. Okay? In order for someone to buy from you, they need to know, like, and trust you. You can't go from not knowing you to, to buying from you. It doesn't work. You can't go from not knowing you to trusting you. It doesn't work. No, like, trust. The hardest part is getting their attention. If you get their attention, now you're going to get two, three, four, five minutes to get them to like you and to start building trust and credibility. But if you don't get their attention, it's all for naught. So no, I would not send out a mail merge email that's the same email to all 100 people. Now, there's people that'll probably freaking argue with me about that that are in sales. I don't give a shit. It's not the right thing to do. Take the time. Gather sales intelligence. Use a multi-touch point outreach strategy. And most of all, if this is confusing to you or anybody that's here and you believe anything of what I'm saying here, that I was able to leverage these types of strategies to do over $200 million a year in, as a broker, or not $200 million a year, $200 million as a freight broker. We did over $80 million a year before I sold the company. Get on the wait list for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator at freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. All right, a couple more questions. Yeah, a couple more questions and I got to run. Okay, so Ace asks, if carriers get paid by customer when dropping the car, do I as a broker charge my fee as a deposit and how does my driver get cash, get his cash by customer? Well, if you're doing auto hauling and you're hauling cars, I've seen it done multiple ways. But a lot of times what I saw was the broker would charge the deposit and that would be his fee. And then the customer would pay the carrier upon delivery, either with some sort of check or credit card or whatever the case may be. That would be up to the carrier how they process the payment. But the deposit would be the broker. That would be the broker fee. So if, for example, you, you, know, you had a, a $1,500 load to move a car from A to B, um, then your fee might be 150, 200, 300 bucks. They would give you that as a deposit up front. And then upon successful delivery of that, then obviously that money is yours. If that load never goes through, then you got to give that money back or whatever your agreement is. Um, but then they pay the carrier on the back end. So I think you're on the right track. That's how I've seen it done most often. Okay, so um, listen, great questions today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Listen, give me some feedback really quick. I'd love to hear from you. One to 10. One meaning, Dennis, this was terrible. The training was terrible. And I'm talking about more about the five, uh, well, the training as a whole, the five reasons why freight brokers lose customers and how to avoid them, as well as the Q&A, everything we've done today. Give me a score from one to 10. One meaning horrible, 10 meaning Dennis, I loved it. Anywhere in between and be honest, okay? I've got thick skin. I'm a big boy. I'm looking for feedback. And if it's a seven or below, give me a reason why you don't believe it's a 10 or, you, or what I should change or what I did wrong or what you'd like to see more of, okay? I'm really looking for feedback. I'd really love to hear from you um, to try to improve these trainings. Again, I do these trainings every single week. And I'm always trying to come up with new topics and new strategies and new ways to teach um, to try to help you guys launch and grow a successful freight brokerage. And listen, 
while I'm waiting for that feedback, listen, if you guys are curious about becoming a freight broker and you're looking for some help, you know, you're, you've got some information on Google and you've got some information on YouTube and you got some information in TikTok, but you need to put it all together into a system that's proven to help people grow six and seven figure freight, freight brokerages, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students, uh, been had the Freight Broker Bootcamp online training since 2009. Obviously, it's continued to evolve. Um, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. There is nobody that I know of in the entire industry that does freight broker training, whether that be coaching or whether that be an online course that offers you any sort of guarantee even remotely close to that, okay? So 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Try it, buy it, enroll, check it out. If you're not happy, just send us an email and we'll refund your money. Thank you guys so much for being here. Truly appreciate it. Um, listen, we'll be here next Monday with another Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Do me a huge favor. I love to hear that feedback from you guys. Continue to give me that feedback um, in the comments. And um, you know, I, I just, I appreciate you guys being here. And I've got to run. So uh, we got... Connor was a 10. Thank you so much. Connor, Cynthia says it was an eight. Michael 46 says it was 46 says it was a 20. Thank you. Uh, Gary Bates says seven for now because I just popped in without much to add. Okay. No problem. Um, 10 from Garrett Watts. Uh, Bless Logistics says a nine. Troy Pratt says it was a seven. Okay. Zoran says a 19. Robert Blake says a 10. Michelle says a 10. Hey, how many of you that are listening and watching right now are already Freight Broker Bootcamp um, students, right? If you're already a student who's enrolled in Freight Broker Bootcamp, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. How many people are students here and how many are not but are interested in getting started as a freight broker, interested in the Freight Broker Bootcamp, but you're not enrolled. So if you're if you're already a student, say, yeah, I'm already a Freight Broker Bootcamp student, FBBC student. If you're not, no, I'm interested in enrolling a Freight Burger Bootcamp. I'd love to hear the difference because I know a lot of people um, that join these lives are already students, but many people, because I do stream it on YouTube and I stream it on LinkedIn and, and Facebook, a lot of people pop in here who are just starting to learn about becoming a freight broker, right? And this is their first time ever becoming a freight broker. So I'd, I'd love to hear that feedback. So Ken Anderson, obviously Ken's a student of Freight Burger Bootcamp. He's already enrolled. Joe Momighty, I know he is. Uh, uh, James Wright, he's a student. Michael Mitchell's a student. Um, Kat Moody's a student already. ALB Trucking is a student. Uh, Troy Pratt's about to join the wait list. Awesome. Uh, Hector T, student from Fresno, California. Ollie's in, in the middle of the no cold calling tra training. He's finished the sales accelerator program. Uh, Michael Watts. FBA, he was a freight broker sales accelerator student. Awesome. And Garrett Watts, not a student, but interested in getting around. Thank you so much for the feedback. I truly appreciate it. Listen, thank you much for thank you so much for joining me. Put this in your calendar. Go to your cell phone right now. And at 11:45 or 11:50 a.m. East Coast time, I want you to have an alarm go off letting you know that I'm going to start a training every single week at noon. And it'll notify you. And all you got to do at that point is check your email or go to my YouTube page and you'll see the live training. I'd love for you guys to start, you know, getting here every week. What I've noticed is the people that are successful are the people that immerse themselves in these types of trainings and these types of resources. Appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. And we'll see you next Monday with another Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Thanks all.